Hi, everyone. I'm here with Dr. Nario. Dr. Nario is with Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check them out online and see all the different things that they treat and so on. So thanks for being with us, doctor. I see. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. We are going to talk about a peptide. As you know, if you've been listening, peptides are a short chain of amino acids, usually under 50 amino acids. But this is for short called SLUP, S-L-U-P-P-3. And this one has really got my attention. So first, let me just ask you, I kind of already said it, but what is it? So, Steve, um, today we're going to talk about something that sounds like science fiction, but is it much really, it's there. It's a molecule that mimics exercise at the mitochondrial level. Yes, exercise without the exercise. What does that mean? I'm going to explain that in a bit. So this compound is called, as you mentioned, SLUP332, and developed, it actually was discovered in St. Louis University. It activates ERR receptors. So these are what we call estrogen related receptors, alpha, beta, and gamma, basically the, the master control board for mitochondrial biogenesis and function and oxidative metabolism. So before everybody uh, starts Googling stuff, it is not estrogen. Just want to make sure that's out there. It does not stimulate breasts or uterine tissues or female It doesn't organs. really have anything to do with estrogen, right? No, but it, yeah, that's why it's it's a big misconception. And again, it's, and no, it is not available right now. It's still in research, but it's out there in the market. And But the science behind it is fascinating and very relevant to our anti-aging medicine. It absolutely is fascinating. We did one on retitrutide and now we're doing SLUP, S-L-U-P-P-332. This one is also fascinating with the studies that they're doing. I think they're all animal studies so far. Is that right? Right now it is. And again, there is what we call the gray or black market out there. And uh, I think that's where all the hype is coming from. Yeah. And that's uh, what we would maybe call what we call before we turn this on. Guinea pigs out there doing research on themselves. Right, and, right, right. And hey, you know, then giving their opinion. So, but the research is fascinating and uh, very promising because just the way that what I've read, how you can burn body fat and put muscle on and you just said it, everyone's searching for that exercise in a pill, right? Well, that's right. So, so yeah, what we asked, we asked, I asked, what is it? It's a, it's a peptide, and you kind of described that. So, how does it work? So it works as a what we call an exercise mimetic, Steve, and meaning it turns on the same cellular programs that activate during aerobic training. So what makes it unique is how it works. Instead of using hormones, stimulants, or peptides, it activates ERR receptors, as I mentioned to you, which control mitochondrial numbers mitochondrial efficiency, fat oxidation, meaning burning, ATP output, endurance fibers uh, switching, whole body energy expenditure. So think of ERR receptors as the mitochondria's homeowners association. And Sleuth 3 shows up, politely rings a doorbell and says, hi, mitochondria. We're going to be all like uh, fixing every problem here and we will do the maintenance. I'm going to fix it all for you. So that's your repair guy. And that's how it works. And all of those good things that I listed out those are the benefits that you get when you use SLUP. So an exercise mimetic, that's... So basically what's happening is you're burning more calories, right? So mm -hmm. it's like your basal metabolic rate just jump and you're burning. I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. Don't take me serious on this or anything. It's But it's like you're burning 500 calories more a day or something like that, right? Right, right. Well, in the longevity world, almost every aging biomarker leads back to mitochondrial dysfunction. You have to remember. And by age 50, 60, we see fewer mitochondria, lower ATP, decreasing VO2 max, reduced fat burning, and even impaired metabolic flexibility and slower recovery. So SLUP activates the same molecular pathways you get from consistent endurance exercise. The phenotype associated with the longer health span and better metabolic aging, meaning the physical manifestation, so basically, this molecule tells your mitochondria, you're 25 again, and you're acting like it. 25 again. That's a good analogy. And uh, a lot of the stuff I've read or, or seen is like these rats or whatever they're testing aren't losing muscle. 
right? So they're, they're even putting on muscle. And some of the big rats that are testing it on themselves are putting on muscle and losing body fat, right? Right, right. So you're basically mentioning, yeah, it is. And this is really the core benefits, I think, to what you're mentioning. And let me give you the preclinical research on this and why this has so much potential, especially in our anti-aging and even athletic world. And the, the consistency is very striking. So number one would be increased energy expenditure, meaning burning more fat without changes in diet or activity. So disclaimer, you should still move your body. This isn't a permission slip for you to be lazy. Another one is fat loss and better body composition. So even on high fat diets, losing weight and preserving lean tissue is still pos possible with this. Improve muscle function. ERR activation boosts oxidative muscle fibers. So the youth preserving uh, fat burning kind of burn that you're gonna be getting. Metabolic upgrades. Improve insulin sensitivity, reduce liver fat, restored mitochondrial density, lower inflammatory gene expression. If GLP-1 drugs reduce input, this one actually increases output. And organ protective signals, kidney and metabolic inflammation actually goes lower, likely because mitochondrial stress was decreased also. Again, putting it out there, when you hear estrogen, this one, no estrogenic side effects. Again, female mice had no reproductive toxicity, no estrogen receptor activation that occurred. So this is the excuse me, closest thing we've seen to an endurance training molecule without activating estrogen receptors or stimulants. So do you know where this is as far as going through the research process to get to stage two and three and so on? Do you know where it is? Right now, there's no uh, definite. They always call it preclinical data. So when you're talking about animals, the, they actually stand there for, what, two to three years of studies. The next, once they kind of see that being safe, now human studies are going to be next. So I think they're still in that early stage of studies. But again, as I, to I tell you, uh, this is something that, which I'm going to explain later, there are some bodybuilders out there and uh, I have seen people use this. So I'm going to give you my take on, on them in a bit. Okay. Well, let's get to that. Okay. So you've talked to people that have tried this bodybuilders because I know you do treat quite a, quite a few athletes. Right. And all kinds of things. Again, you guys check out the website and you can see what they do at Biointegrative. Uh, it's in Reno if you're local. So what, what have you found out? So again, this is something that bodybuilders find in relation to, again, it's a molecule that helps them increase fat oxidation and endurance. Again, the underground world, as we call it right now, totally unsupervised and not in medical practice. What they're doing with this is cutting cycles. So they say fat loss accelerates without losing muscle. I think you mentioned that a while ago during our, our, our intro. And endurance, many reports, it's a fake, uh, again, VO2 max boost, but it's almost like cardio, but feels easier. And stacking often combined with, these are the, again, the non-authorized, I guess, uh, compounds that you would hear, Carterine, SR9009. But the ones that I've been hearing also, it's been combined with GLP-1, peptides. So basically anything that makes mitochondria feel like they're training for a marathon. And again, the doses I've been hearing from 0 0.25, 1 milligram, 1.5 milligram. And again, cycling is also is something that, that I've been that hearing. Per week? I'm sorry? Dose, that dosage is per week? Per day, day. Per day. Wow. And again, not doctor approved, not regulated, not recommended, but useful for understanding how the performance world views its effects. Fascinating. And... Um... Is there any other athletes that, that you know of that are trying this? Much more really the bodybuilders. It's just that when you're talking about athletes, sometimes when you're an amateur or professional, you don't want to get affiliated with something that's still in research. So one of the things that I've been hearing from people who are cautious about this is because of the side effects, right? So, I mean, preclinical data, no major toxicity to liver, kidneys, or heart, no hormonal disruption, no breast, again, uterine stimulation, no carcinogenic signals, no bone loss. Again, anecdotal early users or the biohackers, as we call them, had named some. So most common would be GI upset because it's an oral pill most of the time. There's an injectable form also, but the common one is an oral form. Dry or chapped lips, 
Janssen fatigue and sometimes headaches. Again, it, 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 it's all about mitochondrial health and the side effects are very minimal. So is this, this, this is improving the function of the mitochondria in your body and that's what's making your body burn more energy? That's right. So again, mitochondria, as we age, it just dies away. So here's the way I, I can tell you that uh, mitochondrial enhancement medicine is basically what the theme of Sloop would be. It supports metabolic e efficiency, higher energy output, endurance um, expression physically, less sarcopenia. So as we get older, we lose muscle. And this is the one that maintains the muscle, especially in the aging population. Better fat oxidation, improved recovery, and systemic mitochondrial durability. Again, GLP-1s uh, manage appetite, but sleep supports the cellular engines that burn fuel. It's the other half of metabolic longevity. That's why all of these criteria that I just mentioned, this is the reason why anti-aging and longevity, longevity medicine will benefit from this. Yeah, and like other uh, mitochondrial peptides are like MOTC. We did an interview, a little talk on MOTC. That's fairly popular. People are watching that one. Right, right. Yeah, and if you, if you guys want to see all the little discussions I've done with Dr. Nario, there is a playlist where it's just Dr. Nario and myself. You can go watch all of the, the videos that he's in. And, you know, when you, when you leave questions, I try to notify him and let him know that, hey, you got two or three questions here. Can you get on there? And you get on there when you can and answer them, right? Of course. Yeah, I think I'm working on our last video. So I'll make sure I answer everybody's question. Yeah, because that was on um, Reddit True Tide, which is people are going nuts about that. Right. Um, Mott C, SS31, those are also um, mitochondrial type uh, peptides, right? Right. So you mentioned these other peptides. So here's some longevity tools or stacking, if you want to call it stacking. Yeah. How about, how about, what are some of the, what are the people stacking? Right. So again, the, I don't want to say stacking, maybe combine also. So number one, again, exercise. Do not replace exercise with a sloop. Uh, metabolically, it mimics some endurance pathways, as you could see. And also, as I, you kind of hear me saying this over and over, it's like cardio in a pill, right? So that's why exercise, weight training. That's the one that you need to combine with this one. Uh, metformin. Uh, metformin lowers glucose and mTOR and sleep actually increases mitochondrial output. So the molec uh, they are molecular opposites, but again, synergistic in a way. And the GLP-1s, such as retotrutide, terzepatide, and all GLP-1s lowers appetite. Sloop increases energy burn. So together, potential metabolic perfection, meaning more weight loss, better blood sugar control, and also the other peptides. As you mentioned a while ago, peptides, for example, BPC-157, uh, peptides of that, that nature repairs, and sloop energizes, meaning they're both working together to heal tissues, for example. So that's why different lanes, both valuable. So a lot of, a lot of stacking that you can really think about with, uh, with sloop. Uh, it's, just, it's so early in this stage that I'm sure in the future there's going to be more. What about would you also combine growth hormone releasing hormones and growth hormone releasing peptides with? Mm -hmm. with? Right, right. So you have to remember, uh, like tesamorelin and pomorelin, they also produce weight loss, and, but at the same time form more muscle, right? And in that objective alone, and even growth hormone by itself, it actually stimulates uh, mitochondrial uh, function and re re uh, revitalization. So combining them together also gives you so many benefits that you can't imagine. Yeah, it is. And you guys, you got to realize we're not telling you, I'm not even a doctor. He is wait, over there. He is, <laughs> but we're not suggesting anything. This is just fascinating. And I like to ask the doctor questions about what he knows about the research and what's happening with the peptide world. So go go do go do your own research on these fascinating pept peptides and talk to your doctor dr nario is my doctor but he's not your doctor any any last thoughts or anything that you would add to this well again just to wrap up again early stage sloop 
but high potential for exercise mimetic and also high potential for mitochondrial signaling enhancements. And I like the fat oxidation of this, helps the body tap into youthful endurance phenotypes. And again, I, I want you to be looking out for this in the future because it's just one of those game changers. If it is something that is going to be available, I hope it doesn't get expensive when, of course, when pharma gets in there. But I, again, as I mentioned to you uh, at the beginning of the talk, I wanted to thank our gray market, black market people, even though they get shade from other crowds and populations. I, I do tell them that, wow, you guys are probably the, the first research group that actually brings light to or ideas to us clinicians on why these things work. So it's not like a, a government funded uh, in the gym, you know what, what I'm talking about. I'm not promoting that. It's just that there's so many people out there who are proactive about health that they're willing to try something. But again, we always want to do it safely and uh, consult your doctor when you're doing something like this. But I applaud everybody out there who is trying to be more proactive about benefits and how we can enhance our, our everyday selves. Yeah, you know, talk to your doctor and find out, you know, when this might be available because it, it takes a long time to go through the testing process and to get to stage three and then to where it can actually hit the market, right? So anyway, watch for this. Uh, you guys go do your own research on it. And Dr. Nario, I can't wait to uh, talk about whatever the next peptide you're, you're researching can't wait to hear about it. So thanks for being with us. Well, thank you, Steve, for having me again. As we all know, that knowledge is power. And thank you for letting me provide you with edge on longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.